Hi friends, in my previous session, I explained how to create a build pipeline for .NET Core application. Okay, so in this session, I'm going to explain the process of creating a build pipeline for a .NET framework application. Okay, the steps are pretty much same. So let's start with it. Okay, so first thing is click on the button new pipeline. Well, there are two options presented. We can go with the YML approach and we can go with the classic editor approach. So what is the advantage of using classic editor? You are not required to write any YML and this is the most preferred approach nowadays guys. So click on the use the classic editor link. Now we are presented with the screen where we have to make the selection of source nothing but the source for our source code okay so I have selected Azure repos git as my source okay and from the team project I have to select the project to which I belong to so a team project contains the source code repositories and source code repositories contains the branches okay so let's select a team project first from the drop down presented Once a deep project has been selected, you are required to select a repository, okay? And then for that respective repository, you need to select a branch. The default is master that I have selected and I'm going with the next screen, okay? Now we are presented with the select a template wizard, okay? By default, Azure DevOps provides a lot of options to create pipelines in a very short steps. Okay, so if you see the featured categories, you have option for a .NET desktop. Guys, just apply this and you will get a pipeline with all the required tasks ready in order to run a Windows Classic desktop solution. In the same way, you have for Android, ASP.NET web application, for the Azure web app, okay, Docker container. So there are a lot of options available. Even you can run and even you can build a NPM based application like Angular or React kind of applications also. So there are a lot of options provided for us. So the preferred approach what I do is I would like to go with the empty job. Okay, I will start with the empty template and then I will add the tasks or steps as per my requirements. So let's click on the empty job. And one more approach I would like to highlight here is an empty pipeline. Guys, we can go with empty pipeline also because by default it will give you an empty job and the agent specification for the pipeline. The only thing I am required to do here is I need to add my own steps which is specific to my requirement. So just click on apply here. Okay, well and good. Apl after applying the empty pipeline okay or empty template we are presented with a build pipeline like this have a look at it guys see it's a build pipeline okay it has a name agent pool is azure pipelines pool and agent specification is vs 2017 windows 2016 okay get sources as we did in the first step we selected the team project okay and inside the team project, we selected a repository called SQ Sample, and the branch was the master branch. Okay. And an agent job has been provided by default. So as you can see, the display name is agent job one. Okay. Agent selection inherit from the pipeline. That's a default option. I would like to go with parallelism none but if you want parallelism you can mention the multi configurations okay and multi agents also so i will leave the defaults the next step is now i will start adding some steps to my build pipeline okay usually for a dotnet based application what is the process of building a library first thing we have to restore all nugget packages we have to clean the solution of project okay and then we have to build the solution of the project and whatever artifact is generated from the build we have to publish it to the nugget or we need to publish it to some other location okay 
so let me add some steps okay so the first step I'm going to follow over here is I would like to use a specific version of the nugget tool okay in order to restore the nugget and in order to publish the nugget packages so simply click on the plus button of plus icon on the agent job okay click on plus okay so I want to use a nugget tool installer guys I will let you know one point about the Azure DevOps Azure DevOps provide you, provides you an option to select a specific version of the tool you would like to use to your project for example if you are using some legacy applications and if it is making use of some tools like Nugget and others Azure DevOps provides you an option to select the specific version of the tool in order to perform the tool specific operations guys as you can see the description of the Nugget tool installer acquires a specific version of Nugget from the internet or the tools cache and adds it to the path. Use this task to change the version of the Nugget using the Nugget tasks. Okay, so this is the flexibility provided by the Azure DevOps when it comes to the tools. Okay, so simply click on add button and that will be added to your agent job. So click on it. That's it, guys. It's added here. And now we will configure the options. In order to make the things a little faster, guys, I have added the required tasks for my .NET Framework build pipeline. Okay, so what I have done, use Nugget 4.4.1. Okay, I'm going to use this version of Nugget to perform all Nugget related operations. Now, using this Nugget 4.4.1, I'm going to do a Nugget restore. Okay. Okay, so if you see the Nugget Restore task, the name says Nugget Restore, the command, guys, this is the most important thing here, this is the most important configuration, what you would like to do with Nugget, you are provided with so many options here, see you can perform a restore, you can pack, you can push, and there are some custom commands you can provide with custom, okay, so let's start with the restore, that is our first step. Okay, so I'm doing the restore of all the packages referenced by my ABC library. Okay, so that is said and I have to mention the projects.json. Okay, I need to provide a path to the solution of my C sharp project. Okay, so that's why it says path to solution packages.config or package.json. Usually packages.config will contain all the packages referenced by our library okay so I have used the concept of build variables to achieve that okay so what is the advantage I have kept in a centralized place that's called variables so these variables will be used throughout all the steps of my build pipeline so if changes if I want to make any changes to the to my uh, build variables it will happen in a centralized place and will be reflected to the all steps okay that is set and next step feeds and authentication okay what field i would like to use okay am i straight away pushing or publishing sorry am i straight away restoring my dependencies from nugget.config okay or from the fields i select here which are the fields we have current created in our organizations azure devop tools okay so I have selected the option feeds I select here and I have selected a feed called my name. And what is a nugget feed? A nugget feed is a container which contains all your library packages, the new PKG files with respect to the version numbers. Okay. And guys, the most important step is always check this use packages from nugget.org. If your library is making use of some third party libraries, in those cases, it will automatically download those packages and keeps into your feed. That is the feed you created in your Azure DevOps. Okay, now let's move on to the build step. Guys, build step is nothing but your MS build step. Okay, the way you added the Nugget tool installer and then the Nugget steps, same way you can add a step called MS build. Simply click on this plus button. Okay, and search for MS build one step one option one plugin will be available simply click on that step and add it to your pipeline as i have already done that so if you see the configurations or the properties of this step 
simply it's a hazard display name the project you want to build remember guys if you see the information icon here if you click on the information icon it says that we will let you path from river root of the projects or solutions to run okay so wildcards can be used for example star 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 or cs project for all cs project files and subfolders so basically here you need to mention the cs project file or the dot solution file you would like to build okay you can build all the cs project files of a solution by just providing dot sln here okay or you can give one by one project names also so i have preferred the approach of providing just the library i would like to build so that is cs project okay so i have given path to my CS project file that's my library version I have selected the MS builds latest version architecture the default x64 build configuration once again it's a variable mentioned in variable sections so in one place I can set the build configuration if I set it to debug my pipeline will build this CS project or the library in the debug mode if I set it to release it will build it in the release mode and there is one more option to specify the optional MS build arguments. We have the provision to provide some additional arguments to the MS build. Okay, that we can do in this section. And there is one more checkbox called clean. If you click on the icon, it says that run a clean build. That is slash key colon clean, which we run on our local machines using command line prior to the build. So if you select this, this will perform always a clean build. Okay. That's the best practice and I will select it. Hi guys, as I was speaking about the build pipeline variables and the build pipelines variables section. So whenever you would like to utilize some configuration value throughout your build pipeline, it's the best practice to mention a variable for it. Okay, so I have created some variables like build configuration, that is a list. If I want to make a debug, I can make a debug here. So that it will build my project in debug mode if provided. Build folder name, provide the build folder path where your source code is located. And then build platform in the CPU I have selected here. Build a project name, mention the build's project name, that's the C's project name over here. And the system collection ID, these are the system provided variables which are available to all the pipelines. Okay, guys. So I'm not going to discuss much about it. Okay, the system definition ID contains some GUI ID and system of team project contains your team project's name. So let's move on to the next steps. And comes our copy file step. Step. Okay, a copy file step is nothing but a copy command in our <laughs> command prompt of Windows or Linux. What it does, it takes some files or folders from source and it will copy to the target. So my source folder is the system provided variable called build.sources directory. So what kind of content I would like to pick here? See guys, I have clearly mentioned. See, the file paths to include as part of the copy, as I already explained. So what kind of filter I would like to apply? So I would like to get only new PKG files from the sources directory. Okay, once my project is built successfully, okay, so what will happen is in the sources directory, in the bin folder and with the build configuration, either release or debug, okay, there will be a folder created like slash bin slash release slash all your libraries will be, all your library artifacts will be kept over here, okay, apart from keeping the library artifacts like .dlls and other files like pdbs and all, it also keeps a .new pkg file also, which is our nugget package file. So my target here is that I want to pick only the new PKG files in order to publish it. Okay, so I'm picking just new PKG files and I'm putting it into a target folder called build.artifact staging directory. Again, this is system provided variable and this artifact staging directory contains the artifacts location. Okay. I, ideally, in most scenarios, artifact staging directory contains the build artifacts and build artifacts are the binaries or outputs produced by the MS build or any build tool. Now the next command is nuggets push command. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do, I'm selecting the command push here in order to push my new PKG files which were saved into artifact staging directory in previous step that's called copy files. If you see the path, build staging directory, build folder name slash bin slash configuration that's a release slash dot new PKG. So I'm selecting a feed which contains, which will be a container for our new PKG files. So I'm picking, I'm selecting the feed from my organization. So the feed I have created is my own. Okay, so once Nugget push executes successfully, my new PKG file with the virtual number will be available in my lib feed. The next step is publish symbols path. Ideally, these are the top PDB files, portable debugger files which are used for debugging. Okay, if you are running your application in release mode, there is no need for such symbols path that is not PDB files, but if you are doing it with a debug configuration, then using these .pdb files, you will be able to debug your application, okay, by attaching that instance to your Visual Studio. So that's what path to the symbols folder is your source code, source directory for folder path, and the pattern given is .pdb, okay. Nothing much here and the artifact name is a symbols underscore configuration that is symbols underscore debug or symbols underscore release based on the value built configuration. The final step is publishing of the artifacts. Okay, so once a build is successfully done, once we push all our libraries to their feeds, okay. So what is the final step is publishing of the artifacts. Okay. So what are we doing here is we are giving a path to publish which is our build dot artifact staging directory which is the default variable provided okay and what should be our artifact name you can give any name guys if you have your project say xyz project and abc library then give xyz dot abc basically it's a name for your zip file okay what this particular step does is it will get all the artifacts or output of the build process that those are the binaries it will simply make a compressor file that's a zip okay and it gives that zip name whatever you give in artifact name and put it into a location that's called artifact staging directory or azure pipelines okay from where our agents will pick these artifacts to deploy them onto the target environment so if you see the description of artifact published location, choose whether to store the artifact in Azure pipelines or to copy to a file share that must be accessible for the build agent. So basically this location should be in such a place that it should be accessible for your build agent. Okay. So, so once you conclude that you have added all the required steps to your pipeline, go to the top bar that is there is an option called save and queue. Okay, there's a drop down which gives you three options save and queue, save. It depends on your requirement. If you click on save and queue, it will save and will start running the build pipeline. Okay, so once a build pipeline runs successfully, okay, so in the pipeline's run status, you can see that the check in you have made for your branch, the check in comment or the check-in message will be visible here I have deliberately a uh, strike note because I don't want to share any information here okay and then the person's name okay or his initial will be shown who has made the check-in and then the check-in ID the git check-in uh, ID will also be shown against which comment or check-in the build pipeline and then shows the status in terms of green for successful run, red for failure and gray for not run. Means this particular pipeline has not run. We have not created any new runs for this pipeline. Okay. Well, that's it from today and I hope you people enjoyed this session. We will meet in the next one. Thank you.